When it comes to eating vegetables, it's not just kids who are picky. Turns out herbivorous fish can be picky too, and that could spell trouble for endangered coral reef systems. The issue is seaweed. Several species emit chemicals toxic to corals. In numerous cases, we had seaweeds that we know produce specific compounds that kill corals on contact. So it's critical that fish eat that seaweed to keep it in check, and that's where pickiness comes into play. With help from the National Science Foundation, researchers at Georgia Tech used video cameras to see who's eating what on coral reefs at the Fiji Islands. And for some of those most potent seaweeds, we had one species of herbivorous fish that was the only thing that we ever saw eating that one. For that type of toxic seaweed, all the other fish would avoid it, but one species of rabbit fish would show up and just graze it voraciously until it was all gone. In fact, the scientists found each type of seaweed they studied is eaten by a different species of fish. So that one fish, removing it from the reef, could make a big difference. Removing it by overfishing, which has decimated fish populations in many areas, and that's contributed to overgrowth of seaweed and the loss of corals. To see which fish are most important to controlling seaweed, Mark Hay and then graduate student Doug Rasher moved samples of seven species of common seaweed into healthy reef systems at multiple sites, each with large populations of fish. Rasher turned on the video cameras and started recording. Doug watched 45 hours of film where he went back and forth and watched every single fish that came into every single frame and which thing it ate how many bites it took, how often it visited. And I can't remember the number of bites he counted, but it was in the many tens of thousands. The patterns were remarkably consistent. The same fish were doing the same things in all of these places. Different species of fish eating different types of seaweed. Why? The seaweeds have evolved different defenses against these herbivores, and they work against many of them, but not all of them, because of the chemicals that the seaweeds make. And we found that it's not enough just to have an, enough biomass of herbivores on reefs. You have to have the right mix of species because some can eat one seaweed and some can eat another. The researchers learned that just four herbivorous species removed most of the harmful seaweed, so loss of any one of them could be especially damaging, information that may be helpful for protecting those fish. This is just an important demonstration of the functional role of biodiversity. The researchers also compared the quality of coral reefs in marine protected areas to reefs where fishing is allowed. When you swim through the marine protected areas, and these are areas where people haven't fished for about the last 10 years, you have about 40 to 60 percent cover of live coral and 1 to 2 percent cover of seaweed. So lots of corals, almost no seaweeds, lots of fish. It's what people think of as a beautiful reef. When you go immediately adjacent to that, just outside the border of that where people fish, you go from 60% coral to about 4 to 16% coral, and you go from 1 or 2% seaweed to 50 to 90% seaweed. And so it's shifted from being a coral-dominated, um, complex, diverse system to being sort of a seaweed-covered parking lot with very few other species there. It's a dramatic demonstration of what fishing alone can do to an area. Ultimately, the researchers hope to provide information to village leaders that could help them manage their reefs to ensure the reef's continuing health, while helping feed the local human population. Long term, we'd like to be able to protect the reefs better. We'd like to be able to uh, keep them from going extinct. So yes, while herbivores will be choosy about their seaweed, he says maintaining the right biodiversity will help coral reefs remain sustainable reef food systems. He's quick to add, though, that while much has been learned, we feel like we're on the cutting edge of ignorance and there's more to do.